guys, this is Pete again with AquaFX. Today we're gonna be doing an installation of a booster pump, commercial booster pump, onto our Blue Marlin unit. Uh, all reverse osmosis membranes need pressure. The more pressure, the better. Minimum of 40 PSI, maximum we really recommend of being 80 PSI to get the units to operate properly. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into this box that we've supplied. First thing I'm gonna see is our nice foam packing. Go ahead and pull this right out. Put this to the side for now. And you'll notice you have your booster pump and other accessories, which we're gonna go into detail here as I get them out of the box. Little instructions right there. And the box I can just go ahead and put to the side for now. First, we'll notice that there's a check valve included. We'll remove him for now and put him to the side. The pump does have a directional flow on the head. So it is gonna be very important that we go in the correct side and feed the unit out of the other side. There's going to be your standard 110 plug for the wall. You've got a solenoid, which is also directional. Notice the arrow on the feed side of the solenoid, letting you know the direction of the water flow. And then finally, we have our high pressure switch, which is gonna go on our product side. This does not have a directional flow to it. So this can be placed in either orientation. Notice I've got my Blue Marlin commercial RO unit here on the ground with my feed line coming from my spigot going into the RO unit. This is gonna be the first place I'm going to cut it. Uh, make sure that your water supply is off, otherwise you're gonna spray yourself with water. So just go ahead and give it a nice flat cut. And coming from my garden spigot, first thing I'm gonna do, again, taking note of the flow, is go into my booster pump. Now the same line that was just previously being fed into my system is now gonna come out of my booster pump to allow the water to be fed into the unit. Uh, one question I will get a lot is, does the orientation of the booster pump matter? It certainly doesn't. You can mount the pump vertical, horizontal, pretty much in any fashion. All that matters is that you get the direction, directional flow uh, correct through the pump. Operating the system in this fashion, we're gonna need to keep this, the pressure about 80 PSI, no greater because we're passing through the clear canisters. However, if we go post clear canisters, we can operate the system at about 100 PSI, getting you a little bit more production, also cleaner water. The one inch solenoid will also go before the first clear canister. Really needs to go anywhere before the RO membrane, but just for simplicity, we're gonna go ahead and place it after the pump before the first clear canister. So again, I'm just cutting the tube that was feeding my sediment filter. Again, taking note of the flow of the solenoid is important. We're gonna go ahead and connect out of the pump into the solenoid and out of the solenoid now, we'll feed into my first 20 inch clear canister where my sediment filter is located. I will now be taking my high pressure switch and placing it on the product line out of the membrane. Remembering that the product line is the center port fitting out of the RO housing. Um, traditionally, I use the blue tubing there to just keep with some color coordination. When installing the high pressure switch, I like to be a few inches off the membrane housing. And again, the high pressure switch does not have any directional flow. So you can just go ahead and connect that in any fashion you like. The one final step we'll be taking now is installing the 3 8 check valve immediately before the high pressure switch making sure that all your tube cuts are always flat. I go ahead and grab this check valve now. And this check valve is directional. 
taking note of the direction on this check valve, I'm now going to install it so that the arrows point away from the RO membrane housing with the flow of water. And essentially the arrows on the check valve should be facing towards the high pressure switch. Now that I've got my check valve and high pressure switch installed, I'm going to go ahead and take my product tube and terminate it at a float valve so that when my float valve is full, my unit will sense that build in pressure and shut himself off automatically, discontinuing the wastewater as well as any sort of production water. I've gone ahead and connected my product source to my float valve. We have a full installation video telling you how to install the float valves on the storage containers, which will be provided at a link if you click below. So here I've already gone ahead and attached that. Now I've got my pump hooked up entirely, and I'm gonna bring you through the next couple of steps of what you should do. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is turn on the water supply so that we make sure the pump is flooded and we have water passing as far as it can get. So again, turning on my garden spigot, you can hear water start to make its way through the system. And I'm gonna plug it in and check for what pressure I'm operating at and then adjust from there. Notice initially when the pump first kicks on, there's gonna be some air in the system and it might be a little loud. Uh, within probably 10, 15 seconds, a lot of that will quiet right down. This is how a pump should sound. There's definitely a mechanical audible noise coming from it, but it's not so loud that you might think cavitation is taking place or anything like that. Now, traditionally at the shop, I have around 50 pounds of pressure. Right now with the pump operating, we're at about 130 PSI, which is too much. Notice on the head of the pump, there's a flathead screwdriver adjustment. Turning this adjustment counterclockwise will lower your pressure and alternatively, turning the, the screw clockwise will increase the pressure. Again, passing through the clear canisters, I would like to keep our pressure at about 80 PSI. You can now hear my production water entering my barrel. You can hear the pump. And you can also see that we're sitting right about 80 PSI, strictly through adjustment of the flathead screwdriver on the head of the pump. At this point, you'll notice that your production has gone way up, that your TDS out of your membrane is lower, and that the system is now automated, which I'm gonna demonstrate really quick. I'm gonna simulate a full storage container simply by holding up on the float valve. Notice that the unit has shut itself off. The back pressure has found its way to the high pressure switch. The check valve has prevented that pressure from bleeding backwards and the unit will stay shut off until you drop the float like I'm about to do here. The unit kicks back on, the pump finds itself and we're making water again. We've now completed the installation of the pump full with automation on our Blue Marlin commercial unit. At 80 PSI, I'm gonna to expect to see about 800 gallons plus per day um, out of this unit. The membrane rejection is gonna be phenomenal as you're gonna be able to measure with the TDS meter. And any questions that you have, please contact us at 407-599-2123, or you can always email us. A general email would be sales at aqua, A-Q-U-A, ee.com and that will find our whole staff so that we answer you the fastest thank you guys good luck making water <laughs>